there, my name is Elgin McLaren. I'm the community manager for Mozilla Hubs. And this is a video that was requested by some people in the community because one user had this really gorgeous model, this 3D model that you can see in Spoke here, um, but it's just a little bit too big. And because um, of its size, it doesn't perform very well in Hubs. So you can look at it on a desktop computer, but on a mobile phone, it wasn't loading. It was just taking forever and ever. And in some cases, it was even causing the browser to crash, which is like, obviously not the sort of like user experience that we want people to have. So I took this model and I was able to um, optimize it, um, make it a little bit more performant by reducing the size of the textures. So I just kind of wanted to walk through how I did that um, in this video in case anyone else was having sort of a similar experience. So right now, this is really behaving very poorly uh, and it's crashed my tab a few times already. So I'm just gonna close out of it right now. Uh, and I wanted to look at the model on Sketchfab itself. So this was actually originally downloaded as um, from Sketchfab as a GLTF. And then the user who had downloaded it um, converted it to a GLB file and then um, used it in hubs. And since they were starting off with a GLB file, what I'm going to do is use Blender to convert from GLB back to GLTF, just so that you know how I went about doing that. And then what I'm going to do is um, modify the images and then convert back to GLB and re-upload it to hubs. So a little bit more about this model. Um, one of the first things that I do when I'm looking at a model in Sketchfab to see if I want to use it is look at the number of triangles. So you can see it's listed here on the side, 22,000. And that's actually not too many. This should perform um, fairly well in hubs. It's still, it's on the large side but it will still work in hubs. Um, when you get into more detailed models, things that are like really realistic looking or quite a bit larger, um, you know that number of triangles can go up exponentially. It gets really, really huge. So once you're dealing with hundreds of thousands or like even millions, like those are just not gonna work very well um, in hubs to begin with. And there are different ways that you can use to reduce the triangle count that I'm not gonna be talking about in this video. But um, as it stands, 22,000 triangles, it should work in hubs but it, it doesn't, it's super leggy. And I, I think the reason why is because um, it's super detailed. So if you look at the actual like painting job that's been done on this, um, it's really a beautiful model. As I get closer, there's like an incredible amount of tree detail. Like this bark looks beautiful, the grass looks really nice. Um, and that's being done because it's got these really um, well-detailed, very large texture maps. But if you're using this in a social VR setting, you probably don't need it to be super, super detailed like this. Like no one's going to be looking at your tree that closely when you're in social VR. So um, I just wanted to point that out. So without any further ado, I think we can jump right into taking the original GLB file and um, working with it. So when it was downloaded from Sketchfab, like most um, Sketchfab objects, they have the option to download as GLTF. Um, <clears throat> so if you have downloaded something from Sketchfab, you might not have to do these first few steps that I'm going to show. But since this user had already converted his to GLB, I just wanted to walk through what that process would be like. So this is a GLB file on my desktop here. And one thing that's nice about GLB is that um, it's all compressed into like one single file. So um, you don't have like images and the 3D model information. It's all gathered together into one single JSON file. So it's really easy to like pass around and share and stuff. But if I want to shrink the size of the images, um, it's a little bit harder because as you can see, there's no obvious way to do that. So I'm going to use a tool called Blender to do the conversion. And Blender is a really great um, free open source 3D modeling tool. It's really powerful and it's what we use um, here at Hubs. So I'm going to just start a new project, just a general, like nothing special. <laughs> Uh, and the first thing we're going to see in the screen is this um, cube, and that's there for scale. We don't really need it here at all. In fact, if we leave it in, then there'll be suddenly a cube in our 3D model, which we probably don't want. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete that. Now I'm going to import that GLB file that was sent to me, and it's listed here under import and under GLTF. So even though it's a GLB, it's under like the subcategory of GLTF files. I've saved it on my desktop, and there we go, import GLTF. And there we go, we've got it imported into Blender, and we can kind of move around the scene a little bit and take a closer look if we want, but I, I trust that it all imported, okay? 
Um, and then I can just go File, Export, and I'm going to export it as a GLTF um, rather than a GLB. So you'll see that by default, it does it as the GLTF binary, but we're actually gonna do it as GLTF separate. And then that's gonna let us use a photo editor tool to be able to open up the textures and shrink their size. Um, I'm gonna just save it in the desktop so it's like in the same spot as the other one. And I would recommend adding in a new file folder at this point. Uh, so building model GLTF, because otherwise it's gonna like shoot out, you know, five to 10 different folders right there on, or files right there on my desktop. So I'll click through. I should probably change the name to something new. So building, very creative. And I'm gonna click export GLTF, okay? Now this is gonna take a few minutes, so I'll probably pause the video while it does it. Um, but I just wanted to give a little bit of context to uh, what we're doing right now. So um, in doing this conversion using Blender, it does add a little bit of extra bloat um, to the, the files. So the images might actually grow to be a bit bigger than we had actually expected them to be. So Blender is maybe not the best tool to be using to do the conversion between the two file formats. However, a lot of the other converters um, require you to either have like um, coding tools or like using the command line on your computer. So there's extensions using like Node and Visual Studio Code um, that also let you do a bit more of an easy transition, but you need to be able to work with code in order to do that. So I wanted to give an example with Blender because it is a graphical user interface and it, it's there's a lot of tutorials and stuff on how to use it as well out there. So it seems like an easier way of jumping into uh, doing these conversions, uh, particularly for people who don't have a coding background. So <laughs> on that note, I'm going to pause the video because I'm pretty sure this is gonna take another five minutes or something. Uh, so I'll touch back with you shortly. Okay, so it has now converted. And so if we look on our desktop, I'm hoping there should be, yeah, there's a folder here called um, Building Model GLTF. And so if I look inside of this, we'll see that I've got all the files that were involved in building this out. So um, now we've got access to images so we can actually just reduce the size of them in order to perform, pr improve the imp performance. Um, if we go to the desktop here, I think, yeah, so it shows the size. Um, Right now, um, the GLTF model here is actually considerably bigger than the GLB, so it has gone through some period of bloat. <laughs> but we can reduce the size of all the images inside of there, and I promise you that it will end up smaller. So <clears throat> the way that I'm going to do this is just manually, um, because I don't expect anyone watching to have any special tools like Photoshop or anything, or some sort of uh, command line tool for automatically resizing images. Uh, so I'm just going to open it up. You can see that this is um, one of the textures in the room. And if I go to actual size, it's like enormous. It's really big. You can see why the computers are having a lot of trouble opening this up. So I'm just going to go ahead and adjust the size for this. Um, so right now it's 4,000. So I'm just going to kind of guess as to what size that it should be. Um, this is not scientific at all. Um, and I know that if you are someone who works a lot with 3D models, maybe you will know that I'm doing absolutely the wrong thing, but it seems to work, <laughs> is just resizing it to a smaller size. So I took everything that's 4,096 and I'm just changing it to 1,000. Okay, and then I'm gonna manually go through and I'm actually just gonna change all of these. Okay, so I have now converted them all into smaller image sizes. <laughs> uh, and you can see if we look at the size of the folder, the new GLTF folder is actually considerably smaller than before. So it was 65 megabytes and now it's down to 15.8. So I could actually have probably have reduced some of the sizes even more if I wanted it to be um, more performant on the web. But in the meantime, yeah, 
so I've got this GLTF, but if I want to put it back onto the web, I'm going to need to convert it to a GLB file again. And there are tools online to do that, but I'm just going to use Blender because we've already got it on our computer and it's nice and easy to use. So I'll open up Blender. Same as before, we'll just hit general. I'm going to delete this cube because we don't need it. I'm going to import that GLTF. So from my desktop, I'm going to open up the building model GLTF file. There we go. I've imported it. It looks like it should be about the same. Um, if you want to take a closer look, you could open up the shading um, panel as well. We can actually take a look right now just to double check that our size change, our change of size hasn't changed the colors at all. And yeah, it, everything looks OK. So I'm going to export it now, once again to GLTF 2.0. And I'm going to go back to my desktop. And by default, it's going to go as a GLB format, which is what we want. And I'll just give it a new name. So building small. And I'm just going to pause the video while it does this, because it might take another minute or two again. OK, so the conversion is complete, <laughs> uh, and it is smaller. So the new updated GLB file is only 15.7 megabytes big, um, whereas before it was 65. So that is definitely an improvement, and it should work now on, um, on hubs at least. And you could even reduce the size smaller if you wanted to be more performant. So what I'm going to do is I've opened up the old scene that we were looking at before. Uh, and we still have this old model in it, which is just not performing that well at all. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to upload a new asset from my desktop, that new building small that I had. Okay, OBS just crashed, so one second. Um, so what I was saying, I don't actually know where I got cut off, but... <laughs> Um, what you do is if you want to, you can just drag and drop the asset into your page or you can copy the URL to it by right clicking on the object and then going to the object in your scene in the hierarchy, the old one. So this is still the big giant, um, the old giant one and I'm going to just click paste and that'll load in the new smaller, more optimized version. And as you can see, it looks pretty good. And next what we can do is we can just like preview what it looks like in hubs and it'll be a lot more performant than it was before. So I'm just going to click publish to hubs and hopefully this will load no problem. Just enter in the room and yeah, we can now look around and it looks pretty good. So yeah, thank you. <laughs> um, if you have any other questions, feel free to find us on our Hubs Discord channel. Um, we're happy to answer any questions there, okay?